Welcome to Basketball You. If you're new to Basketball You, make sure you slam dunk that subscribe button. And just to make sure you don't miss a thing, make sure you tap that notification bell right after you hit that subscribe button. Ah, yes, and welcome back to Basketball You. I'm your favorite host, Little Dribble. Good to finally be here and talk to all of you from the Basketball You family. Welcome back to your favorite channel. I know you came back for a little bit more knowledge, and that's why we're here, and that's what we're going to give you. So, so far, we learned the history of basketball in the men's game, the women's game, and internationally. We also gave you the ABCs of basketball, and we broke down some court measurements for you as well. So, it's important to know that we'll be breaking down positions in basketball this time because at an early age, Age, usually players typically get put in positions based on size and our current state of basketball is almost becoming a game where it's sort of positionless because the taller players that you ordinarily see down low in the post positions playing centers or power forwards are now playing the point guard and shooting guard positions we will talk about all of that shortly but remember it's a game where now you can just develop your skills and find your niche based on your growth as you move forward in the game of basketball, opposed to being in a position because you're really tall or another position because you're extremely small. In my years of getting dribbled up and down the court and watching players develop, I think it's important that you not only develop your skills physically, but mentally as this will give you an advantage to play multiple positions instead of being put in a specific category when you have a certain physical skill set. Parents out there, if you're trying to teach your kid watching this video, it's important that you take a little bit of each skill set from each position so it gives your son or daughter the ability to play in different areas of the court and even the positions. Don't forget, coming at you every day, we have basketball you for you and only for you so make sure you hit that subscribe button like comment and make it a discussion that everyone can talk about if you have any questions hit your guy up little dribble and we will make sure if i don't answer your questions somebody else will all right so don't be afraid to hit us up and follow all our social medias on twitter on instagram and then we got even a little blog that just keeps you up to date with a couple different things we're doing and some other fun things to check out. Back to talking about the positions and the most important thing to make the game of basketball go. First, we have the point guard position. The point guard position is an interesting position because it's almost like football where it's the quarterback of the team. The communication, the ability to call plays, the ability to move players around is very important in the point guard role. One thing that's important is the point guard is an extension of the coach because of the way it sets up plays and it controls the team. The point guard brings the ball up the court and directs traffic and it makes decisions ideally that result in high percentage shots. Now, as I give you a breakdown of the point guard, there's going to be different types of point guards that you will see when you watch professional basketball and even some college basketball as well. And those will be explained in a little bit more detail as I finish the description. Now, on offense, remember point guards need the ability to drive the lane so they can create scoring opportunities for their teammates. They also need to have a solid mid-range jump shot which we discussed what that area is and what those dynamics look like and as well as the three on defense they can focus on guarding other teams best ball handler but also getting into the passing lane for steals as well another thing that the point guard does win on defense they always communicate what defense is being ran because sometimes the defense varies on the different team's skill set. 
The point guards are typically the shortest player on the court. However, that isn't always the case with every player. As long as you have the necessary skills, you can play the position no matter how tall you are. Now that we've talked about the basics of what a point guard does, let's break down the skills and attributes needed to play the position. Most importantly, the point guard is trusted with taking care of the basketball. And by doing this, he or she has the best ability to handle the ball. So ball handling is the first attribute that we'll talk about. A point guard should have the ability to go both ways. That's with the right hand and the left hand with a strong, confident dribble and protecting it with being close to the body and also the ability to maneuver with the ball efficiently, whether it's using moves across or over behind the back or through the legs or whatever you consider a move that might be flashy. But at the end of the day, they're all effective and their moves to protect the ball and to confuse the defender, which will create some scoring opportunities in other positions. Passing is an important factor for the point guard position because while being able to set somebody up in scoring position, a lot of times there's just an initial pass in youth basketball to get rid of the ball to create a sense of safeness or to move without the ball. A lot of times the pass isn't made to set up a teammate in a scoring position. In doing so, when we talk about the point guards that were really good at passing, one thing that you should recognize is when they are driving, when they are making a pass, it's always for a play to be made by another skilled player. Quickness is important in this position because it's more about being skilled with your quickness and having your first step and the ability to understand how to change speeds at the point guard position, which will all be talked about in training videos here in the future. Using a great demonstration of players on these different clips allows you to understand exactly what I'm talking about currently. Communication, I think, is important at every single position, but mainly at the point guard position because the responsibility of communicating to each player in their position, making sure they're in the right spots, and they're effectively moving around so that the coach's play or strategy works at that certain time of the game. Now, rebounding isn't that important due to where they're usually positioned on the court, but just because you're more in the perimeter and more around the wings, you still have to be in a position of safety where if we do miss a shot, you get back in order to make sure that what we talked about in ABCs of basketball, a fast break doesn't happen. Now, it's important for the point guard to be able to guard multiple positions because he or she can typically be a pesky defender and cause a little havoc for the other team's other position players as being smaller, getting under taller players, you can cause turnovers. Now with that ability, it takes a sense of composure and composure is a skill that can be more valuable than all the past skills that I just discussed with you. Composure controls the team as well as the flow of your offensive attack and the game as a whole for your team. Now, the last quality we think that's important with the point guard position is unselfishness. The game of basketball is so stat driven now that kids are watching their favorite players at this position and they think that they have to score on, on an average of a lot of points to be an effective point guard for their team. But in all reality, distributing the ball and being an unselfish player in that manner and also talking to players and helping them understand their role. Now that we've broken down the skills, is the attribute that's most important. And we're gonna talk about what type of point guards are in today's game by giving you an example of some names that you're familiar with and what their abilities are. Now, going over your typical point guard positions and what they do with their different abilities, we'll go over just a couple players that basically highlight the position the way that people see the game now. First thing to talk about is the scoring point guard. Scoring point guards are definitely point guards that just light it up. I mean, they make passes here and there and they do all the different skills that we talked about as far as communication and running the team, but their main job is to score. And a long time ago, there were players like Isaiah Thomas, Tim Hardaway, Steve Francis, Nick Van Exel, Penny Hardaway that were just 
just point guards that just lit it up. And now we have players like Stephen Curry, Kyrie Irving, Russell Westbrook. That'll just give you 40 on any given night. So those are always exciting players to watch. Now you have the ability that is what we talked about for the last attribute, which is the unselfish point guard that makes all the passes. Now, these point guards are typically your very close to being your MVPs of the league. And a lot of times some of the best players in the league as well. And just to go back in time, we have Magic Johnson, who was typically your unorthodox point guard because he was 6'9". That was a very big deal and a very big point guard for a long time ago. And then you have your classic assist leader in the NBA, and that's John Stockton. And then other names that you might be familiar with are like a Rajon Rondo, Steve Nash, and Jason Kidd. Now, they passed the ball with precision and also did it with a little flair, which, you know, the fans did love to watch. Moving along to everyone's favorite thing to do in the game of basketball, that shoot. Now, hopefully when you shoot the ball, you score. The shooting guard is a position that a lot of people want to play, and there's a lot of pressure in the position. But people don't realize the bulk of responsibility that's put on them when they have to score the majority of the points. Sometimes... The sole base of your team winning is whether or not you're hitting shots and other teams plan to strategically stop you, but they cannot because of your ability. As the name suggests, shooting guards need to be able to put the ball in the hoop. It's very simple, but do more than just knock down shots. They have strong off-ball movement when it comes to running through screens and finding open spaces for scoring opportunities, as well as being able to have some ball handling skills. While they don't need to be as skilled as the point guard, these two guards are typically the secondary ball handler, and having this skill allows them to make shot attempts off the dribble, as well as help run a play successfully for the team when the point guard doesn't have the ball in their hand. With that all being said, here are some skills that shooting guards need to have to be successful in their position. Defense is an important component when being a shooting guard because not only are you the best scorer on the team, but you're usually going to have to guard the best player because now they're playing the same scoring position you are. Typically, you are a better defender when being in the shooting guard position because you understand how to play defense on somebody moving without the ball. Also being able to put the ball on the floor and shoot off the dribble. So with all those abilities, you can understand what that other player wants to do. In our current game right now, shooting guards range from about 6'4 to about 6'10. And this allows them to be an effective defender with their ability to move like a smaller player, but also with added length. Because of that length, they're also expected to rebound that basketball, even though they score it a lot. So even though you have the idea of being a scorer, rebounds are just as important as we want to limit possessions. But that's a whole other conversation for another time. Now, one in particular that kind of did all of these different attributes that we're talking about is the greatest in the game. Yeah, that's right. That is right. Michael Jordan. Yes, Michael Jordan. He was a legendary player that will definitely go over at some point in time in basketball. You, if you don't know about him, look him up. His ability to move without the ball, his defense, his athleticism, all played a role in making him one of the greatest of all time. Then you have examples that, you know, they just score it, like Tracy McGrady, Dwayne Wade, Lou Williams, and you might be familiar with James Harden, the beard. Yeah, he gets it done too at a very high rate. And this is someone who really dribbles, they move without the ball, they just kind of have a full package of skills. When you go back to your traditional shooting guards, that got it done effectively with barely putting the ball on the ground. We have to talk about players like the villain Reggie Miller, the clutch game winning champion Ray Allen, and also the three time champion 
Clay Thompson. Now, these are all extremely good shooters, and they leave fans in awe with their ability to score so many points without really putting the ball on the floor. That typically wraps up what the shooting guard does, and that is one of the most exciting positions in the game. Lil Dribble has to refuel with more energy as he calls this timeout. You know how the point guards and shooting guards play, but when we return with part two, Lil Dribble will be back on the court teaching you small forward, power forward, and center. Subscribe so you don't miss out. This is Basketball U. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, follow all of our social medias right there in the description to keep yourself up to date as this channel will have a lot of basketball, a lot of players, and a lot of training and more information on how to play the game of basketball. Remember, someone's always working. Are you? 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 you.